Good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to the Music of Asian America Research Center's third virtual story circle. This is the final episode of a three-part series that we put on to celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. In each episode, four Asian American musicians will share stories about their lives, their family histories, and their professional experiences. A story circle is a methodology that allows us to explore how different people experience and respond to similar situations in ways that are both alike and distinctive. Our conversation tonight is based around four scenarios. After I announce each scenario, each panelist will have two or three minutes to tell a story based on that scenario. After they tell their stories, there will be some time for the panelists to react to each other's stories. Before we begin, let me just introduce myself and the Music of Asian America Research Center, or MARC. My name is Eric Hong, and I am MARC's executive director. MARC is a two-year-old organization dedicated to using music to increase knowledge and awareness of Asian American history and experience. Our programs disseminate information about Asian American cultures and open difficult conversations about race, immigration, mental health and trauma, economic inequities, and many other issues. To learn more, please visit our website at AsianAmericanMusic.org or follow our Twitter or Facebook pages. For the next few months, we will have a virtual showcase of Asian American community music ensembles. Uh, two people tonight actually are participating in this project. Um, and we will also release two podcast series and a couple dozen oral histories. One housekeeping note before I introduce the panelists. We know that the captioning is running a little behind. We're trying a new service and we'll see how it goes. We also know that as with any live captioning, there will be mistakes. These problems will be fixed when we release the archived version uh, of this session in a week or two. Now, it gives a great, uh, great pleasure to introduce our panelists. Since this is a virtual forum, can you please say hello and wave a little when I introduce, uh, when I say your name? So joining us from Los Angeles is sound ethnographer, sound artist, and community organizer, Dr. Umi Shi. And joining us from Los Angeles also is composer Dr. Juhi Bonso, who, whose works celebrate musical and cultural diversity, nature and the environment, and strong female models. Hi, everyone. Joining us from Philadelphia is percussionist, composer, educator, and cultural producer Alex Shaw. He is the director of the great Philadelphia Ensemble Alo Brazil. Hi. And joining us from Cambridge, Massachusetts is conductor and tubist Dr. Um, Chi Sun Chen. He is the music director of three organizations, the Brookline Community Band, the Greater Boston Chinese Cultural Association Chinese Music Ensembles, and the Boston Synchrony Chinese Percussion Ensemble. Also helping us tonight is Mandy magnuson Hong, Mark's board secretary. She will be monitoring the Facebook feed page, make sure everything is working. Um, there are, uh, you can also uh, put questions into the Facebook feed uh, and she will relay us those questions um, at the end of our session. So here is our first scenario. In about three minutes, uh, can each of you please introduce yourself and tell us about an object or activity that has comforted you during the pandemic? Uh, can we start with uh, Chi Sun? Okay, hi, yeah. Um, so um, my name is Chi Sun Chen and um, I just um, uh, come to, first come to the, um, this country to study music. I'm a tuba player. And then, um, so I I got my doctor degree from Boston University, and um, I was um, happened to be the um, Chinese music ensemble music director and conductor, um, which is a really big challenge to me. So um, during this pandemic, um, I when Eric um, tell us to get an object of comfort, you know, there was a very interesting topic. By the way, I really like that. Um, I haven't thought that much because um, I thought that as long as I stay home with my wife, everything should be comfortable, right? Um, so, um, so I, I when when he when you asked me that, I, I think I figured that okay, I I thought I have something, but um, then it turns out that uh, today I thought that okay, when when during the pandemic, what I do the most with that object, which is my instrument actually, my tuba. 
So I, that is very important because um, I know that the COVID-19 is a, you know, is a deal. It's not like um, you know, a flu or something. So one of the things that you, uh, to keep you, keep you healthy is just you have to practice and do your nuns exercise. So tuba, it just matched that. I get to play my instrument every day. And then, um, and also before the pandemic, I was like doing all the conducting, teaching, and um, a sort of things that, that I won't be able to uh, touch my instrument that much. Right now is there because of the pandemic, I'm home you know, every day. So I have more time to practice. And it feels like I'm almost like back to the school and being a music student again. Um, so that really makes me feel like I, I feel comfortable with because um, when I woke up, if I can, I do some exercise too, you know, um, I had a very good t cell exercise that um, is also doing via the Zoom, um, which is very good. We, we do it with a lot of people, but after we do the exercise and then I play my instrument and when I play, I feel normal, then I feel like, mm, I think I'm healthy and um, I'm okay. Yeah. So that's, that's it. Uh, Eric, I can't hear you. You muted. All right, I, I do this all the time. I, I don't know <laughs> when I'm muted and not muted on Zoom. Uh, Umi, can you please uh, uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so I have a background in ethnomusicology, and in fact, that's how Eric and I met. Um, so. I went to school at the University of Virginia and got my PhD in the critical and comparative studies in music. And um, so I decided to kind of take a, a, a shift from that, um, sort of really thinking about how I can continue to do sort of ethnomusicology and also do sort of work as a scholar performer. Um, and um, and just in school, I wrote I actually wrote this dissertation about Asian Americans playing rock music, um, exploring just different like notions related to uh, digital transnational diaspora and Asian American identity or disidentity. Um, and, like ended up having this long term obsession with the ter with the idea of racial melancholia just, you know, a, a term that, that sort of spoke a lot to my identity um, of a hyper minority growing up in Virginia. Um, and, uh, and wanting to sort of really push that out in performative um, modalities. So, um, so yeah, it's just, I, I now live in Los Angeles and, uh, and have been kind of inter playing with the intersection of sound and ethnography and, uh, and also community organizing. I have a band called Bitter Party, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit. Um, so the object that I brought today is, I don't know if you can see, maybe I'll bring it up closer. Um, these are, um, traditional Japanese flower arrangement shears. Um, these are my grandmother's shears um, that she used to do um, Japanese uh, flower arrangement, uh, ikebana. Um, so during the pandemic, I've been using these shears um, to do a lot of gardening. I became really like all of a sudden this like urban farmer, like trying to figure out, you know, how do I best grow things? Um, and my garden is sort of exponentially growing and really experimenting with the idea of like cutting and growth, like how do I shape growth? So then I put energy into life giving, life affirming forces. Um, so that's what I'm doing in, during this time. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Hi everyone, my name is Juhi Bansel. I'm a composer and I write a lot of music for choirs, orchestra, chamber music, um, opera, and vocal music. My background is a little bit all over the place, to be honest. I uh, lived in India as a child. I was born there and my family lived there till I was seven, at which point we immigrated to Hong Kong and I did all my primary schooling and my secondary schooling there and then moved out to Los Angeles to first do my bachelor's at USC and then I stayed and did all through my doctorate. And um, now I teach at Pasadena City College and of course work and write music um, around Los Angeles. 
my background, Eric, you had mentioned sort of how our background field sort of informs what we do as work. Um, for me, it's all these different bits and pieces. So, for example, I, when we lived in India, my mom used to work for All India Radio, which is this big sort of national radio company. And both she and my dad, um, all the time, and they still do this, they love listening to Indian classical music. So that's something I just have grown up my whole life, listening to a lot of Indian classical music. And then it was interesting moving to Hong Kong. I learned to play a little bit of Arhu. I was in the Chinese orchestra, you know, in high school, and at the same time working in music theater and listening to Western rock music and metal and this and that. So musically, all those things kind of come together to inform the work that I do. And uh, Eric, you had mentioned this to a certain extent, sort of out of all of that, some of the themes that are really important to me and that I try to bring out in my work. Um, of course, there's this idea of multicultural diversity. That's so much a part of who I am and something that's just so exciting to me and so important to me to kind of celebrate all the different musical and I, sort of cultural identities that we can look at what we have in common and also appreciate what's different about us. Um, then, there's sort of, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of really strong female characters growing up, so that also is something that's really important to me in my work, focusing on female role models. And then outside of music, um, I'm a backpacker and surfer and diver, so the environment and wilderness is something that's just really important to me, and that's probably the third stream of what I do in my work. You had also asked Eric about an object, and, you know, ever since you mentioned this object that's giving us comfort, I've really been thinking about it. Um, and it was, it's a tough one for me to answer because in, I'm going to blame my mother for this. Um, my mom is a bit like Marie Kondo before there was Marie Kondo in that she doesn't want you to keep anything that doesn't bring you joy, but things generally just don't bring her any joy. So I've kind of adapted that to the sense that I'm a bit of a minimalist, I would say. So I don't really have a thing that's bringing me joy through COVID. That being said, one really fun thing that I've started doing through this, um, you know, since all these online meetings have become so normalized in the last month and a half or so, I started taking Spanish lessons, conversation lessons with this lovely lady from Colombia. And it's been making me very happy once or twice a week just to log on and butcher my way through Spanish, but hopefully improve a little bit from week to week to week. Thank you. All right. Well, my name is Alex. Um, it's um, awesome to hear everybody's, a little bit of everybody's background. They're all kind of meeting tonight. And there's so many overlaps I'm hoping we get to jump into. Um, I grew up in Virginia, uh, and I grew up in southwestern Virginia, and uh, grew up in a, in a family of classical musicians. So that was a big part of um, my, my musical realm. Um, but I uh, went to school up in, at the Swarthmore College and did my undergraduate degree in biological anthropology and uh, moved to Philadelphia shortly thereafter, uh, graduating and started teaching in the Philadelphia School District and um, performing as a professional musician and then sh um, shifted into teaching artist work and cultural production work, which is kind of like producing and um, curating and, and that kind of work. And I've been doing that for last 20 or so years. I took a little break a couple years ago and did a grad school program. Uh, at California Institute of the Arts. So I was out near LA, near you, you guys. And i um, um, back in Philadelphia now and uh, raising my family. I'm a father of two sons. And um, that's a big part of what I'm, I'm living right now and just how, how, to, how to work and live and play under the same roof 24 hours a day is uh, quite an interesting experience for, for all of us. Um, I love the outdoors as a percussion, as a professional percussionist, you know, um, I'm very engaged in sound and, and listening to, you know, to what is that, how, how the sounds around us inform the sounds that we play and, and vice versa. So how those, all those things are, are in, um, how to engage in, in the environment around us, the sonic environment around us, how to be more aware and be more conscious and how that informs our practice or my practice as a percussionist. Um, and, um, I guess just jumping over to the object, that was a challenging question too. You know, I was kind of oscillating between music and food, <laughs> back and forth. Um, I actually was sick with COVID-19 at late March and I came down, um, I was pretty bad for a couple of weeks. I had a uh, fever for a solid two weeks, 14 days. So I was talk about a deep reset. Um, 
I think anything at this point, um, especially music gives me joy. I actually could not listen to music much at that time. I was just too sensitive. I would begin to weep, you know, within a few seconds of listening to anything. I was just too emotionally um, bare at that time. Um, so just re re-embracing the instruments that I have. Um, one example would be uh, this right here, which we would know as a tambourine, but um, it's a Brazilian tambourine called Pandeiro. And um, just kind of reacquainting myself with, with this drum and the practice of, this, of playing this drum and all the, the versatility that it has to offer. Um, and just kind of deepening that, that relationship that I have at this time and during this reset, I think for me, has been uh, really powerful. Um, but like uh, Omi had mentioned, I'm also getting outside more, trying to get in the garden more. So everything you guys are talking about, you know, playing music and getting in the garden and, and just re-engaging with, with our music is, is um, something that's been uh, object or practice of comfort at this time. Great, thank you so much. Um, do you want to react to each other's stories or do you prefer if I ask you a question? Um, I'll, I will offer something real quick. Uh, when Juhi was talking about music, um, and maybe this will this will leap into some future questions, but just thinking about the practice of our of our parents or our grandparents, um, I was told a story um, back when my mother's father uh, was still alive. Um, um, I was visiting my grandparents in Hong Kong, and he was telling me the story of how they met, and uh, he was a very interesting character, and he told me that uh, he had a, a, a short set of criteria for looking for his future wife. They were at the University of China at the time, uh, both being refugees during World War II. And uh, there was one piano on campus, and um, he was convinced that he was going to marry a pianist, and he went with his friend to the practice sheet and uh, asked him, which is the best pianist on campus? And he started showing up at her practice time and convinced her that he could sing, which he couldn't, and asked her to accompany him. And I guess he was convincing enough they, they ended up together. But um, just thinking about, you know, how music has played a role in our, in our different stories and our different journeys, um, that's something that I guess has, has, has filter, filtered down in different ways. But just wanted to throw that out there as a connection. I, it's cool that there's so many Hong Kong connections here, too. So I, I look forward to talking to you guys more about that later. <laughs> yeah, that's such a great story. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So in, in hearing some of the stories, um, I, I'm hearing that some of you are interested in control during this time or gaining control in this time. And maybe others of you aren't as interested in gaining control. Do you want to discuss this a little bit? I mean, I think I'm sort of embracing this feeling of everything spiraling in a certain set of chaos and feeling like I have no control over everything. You just kind of float along as best you can and try to stay above it, I guess. That's been my personal experience. I, I can't quite hear what uh, Eric, you just said. The internet was just sort of like... Oh, sorry. I, I, I heard, I, as you were telling your stories, I'm hearing that some of you are interested in, in, the, in your favorite objects or, or activities in trying to gain control. Yeah. Uh, and then others of you are less interested in this control. So I'm just wanted to... Um, see how you feel about the idea of control at this time. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, um, I think that, um, I don't know, I just feel like that um, we, I, I, we never had that kind of pandemic before because when 2003, the SARS in Hong Kong, um, I, I wasn't there. So all I'm trying to do is just, you know, keep myself healthy and um, and uh, the, I remember that the first time we went out to go to a shop and it was like, we went to a war zone, you know, like went to a battle because we were all just like very scared getting the virus. So, so I, I think that just what I'm doing is just um, doing okay. And um, I feel that um, doing exercise is good. I've been doing some exercise in the morning that was led by a Chinese doctor, which is really good uh, for for your lung, for your Im oh, uh, for the immunity, it was very good. So all these things that I feel like hmm, I should, you know, keep that, keep doing it. I've been doing it for two months now, and uh, keeping me healthy. Yeah. 
I think, you know, for me, uh, so much of my music life, musical life, is very social. It, you know, it's, it's hanging out with people, playing music, and exchanging life stories, um, you know, being in this practice space, which, you know, you kind of see in the background, which is where my band practices. We haven't actually had the opportunity to come together in person, um, and that's been just really difficult for me. Um, <clears throat> And just sort of, you know, I think I think that maybe there is a part of me that just wants to like that feels like I need to let go of that kind of idea, that control of like the, the one way of making music. So I'm kind of exploring some of the other modalities. I've gone back to playing piano, which is a very solitary instrument. Um, but obviously, it doesn't have to be because you can meet your soulmate playing the piano. But like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like just you know, spending time looking at sheet, sheet music and actually like you know, put my fingers to work, um, and connecting with sound in a very intimate way with that one thing. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it's about letting control go. Mm -hmm.